Praise the Lord. So glad to see you today and so glad you've taken the time to drop in on us one more time. You know, God is just a good God. And I mean, you know, the people of God should be in fellowship. We should be loving on one another and understanding that what God has brought together. He's brought us together and we're together to be with people. And many in the, in the body of Christ, we're more into the religion than we are into the relationship. And it's so very important that we understand that God has put us together for such a time as this. When you look at what's going on in the world around us today, if you ever needed a friend, if you ever needed to be in relationship with somebody, somebody that is healthy, someone that knows Christ, you need to be in that relationship now. Because there's so much going on in our streets and in our cities and not just in no one city. It's all over, even in all around the world. But it's just good to know that God has purposed that we would be in fellowship one with another. And we realize there's no real relationship, true relationship without fellowship. You know, you, you, you have to be able to see that. We have to be able to have uh, fellowship. You know, and I'm talking about that agape kind of fellowship, that agape kind of love where we're really able to be open, be real, and not in relationships to be busybodies. But today I want to bring you a, a, a word in reference to the importance of relationship through fellowship. All right? Come, I'm going to, let's, let's get right into the word. You might want to get a pencil and paper because I have some, some points that I want to bring out. You might want to be able to jot something down. I believe God's going to really bless us today, okay? So coming out of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, and it says, Above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Eternal Father, we just thank you, Lord, and just thanking you for just blessing us with one more day. Oh, God, just bless. We're asking you, Lord God, to please be with us today, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to be, be able to receive a timely word today. And Lord God, just move by your spirit upon my viewers, Lord God. Those that have taken the time to view this program, I pray that you would stir something up in them that will bless them real good. And I thank you for that today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Above all things have Fervent love, one for another. Fervent means, you know, we're talking about that genuine. He's talking about loving hard, loving good. We're talking about allowing ourselves to be able to look past the faults of others. See Why? Because he says when you love like that, he says that kind of love will cover a multitude of sins. You know, and all of us are sinners saved by grace. We all fall short of the glory, but we realize that if we can love our brother and our sister, you know, when scripture says, how can you say you love God, but you don't love the people that you're in relationship with? And, you know, and this is one of the, one of the, the chief weapons of the enemy is to divide and conquer, to bring division in the church, to bring division in the home, bring division in relationships and fellowship. So it's so very important that we be able to see that this is bigger than you. It's bigger than, you know, let's just say these, uh, 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 these different things that we might allow to stand in place or to block the walls that we have put up because of the mere fact that we don't want to let a brother, let a sister go. You have to be able to forgive. And you have to be able to see that God is trying to move on your life, on your life, my brother, on your life, my sister, you know, because our actions will always speak louder than our words. So I, I was looking at the Message Bible 
And when I was looking at that, I was looking at Hebrews chapter 13 in the first verse. I love the way it read. And I just want to read it to you right now. And here's what it says in Hebrews 13 and one from the Message Bible. It says, keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. I mean, that is beautifully put. We have to keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. And I realize there are times when brothers and sisters can't get along. But when we're able to step into the word and live this, live the will of God for our lives and understand that we're here to love one another. And then look at the second verse. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers for some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. You don't even realize who you might be in fellowship with. We have to be. A, and you can't judge the book by the cover. You know, because sometimes we look at, you know, the way people address. We look at what they might be saying, how they might be, let's just say, uh, clapping their hands and stomping their feet, how they might be speaking in tongues. So because of all of that, we think that they are so on point and that they truly have a relationship with God. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. None of us knows what another person is sowing. So the, 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 the emphasis should be on you making sure you're doing what you need to do so you can be in right standing with God. Saints, you really have to walk in love. You really have to walk in love, not just on a Sunday, but we have to walk in love on a, da on a daily basis. We have to get into the habit of walking in love on a daily basis. It's a love walk that pleases God. See, you, you have to be, see, I'm here. You should be here to please God. You know, and too many of us are into trying to make sure our needs are met, trying to make sure that we're doing what we need to do so we can be a blessing to ourselves. This is about being able to see the bigger picture because God want to, God want to use you as a servant, as an instrument of righteousness. He wants to use you to make a difference in someone else's life. And this is why he's called the church together. You know, as I said earlier, a house divided cannot stand. A house divided cannot stand. So, and I, you know, I'm not talking about your home. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about you. In other words, you have to be on one accord with yourself. And usually when you find someone that is not on one accord with themselves, they're, go they're going to have a difficult time trying to be in relationship or fellowship with others. Why? Because you're not comfortable in your own skin. You're not happy with yourself or you're not happy with what might be going on around you. And you've allowed what's going on around you to get access or gain access in you. And then now, because you're not feeling good on the inside, that's the overflow that's coming on the outside, contaminating your, your, your environment, your space, and your relationships. God says we're to love fervently. Look at Proverbs 10 and 11. Proverbs 10 and 11. And it says, the mouth of the righteous is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirs up strife. But love covers all sins. See, love will cover not some sins, not three quarters of your sins, but all sins. When you're loving fervently, when you're coming out of a, let's just say, a sincere and true heart. In other words, God says it's time to get real. It's time to get real, saints. You know, we didn't play church long enough. You know, we have been walking in self-righteousness and doing our own thing for so long. And that has become a habit. And God is saying it's time to break some stuff up. It's time to discard that old way of doing things and understand that what he's called us to is to love one another. And you can't really love someone until you're in fellowship with them. You really can't love it. See, the relationship is going to grow stronger through fellowship, you know, through fellowship. You know, I think about those two men that walked down that Amanis Road 
and they, they, their hearts burned as they walked with Jesus, and they felt so good with him. They invited him in the house and, and to sit at the head of the table, and, and when, they, when Jesus began to pray, they realized this must be the Son of God. This must be Jesus because he just had a way of praying. You know, so we, we, you know, the Bible says that John, John was the one that, that laid his head on Joe, on Jesus's chest. And, 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 and I mean, he got to hear the heartbeat of the Lord. My God, not just to hear, but to even feel. See, see, so, so you should want to draw closer to him. And God is saying in order to make that happen now, you have to be in right relationship with those in your world those who God has placed in your life. And, you know, and let me give you, a, let, me, let me just kind of say something here, because just like God has placed some people in your life, you have to be able to discern when the enemy may have placed someone in your life too. See, because the enemy does, does not want you to be able to, to, let's just say, to see what God is now doing in your life and what God want to do in your life. So we have to be able to discern you know, the spirit will bear witness to the spirit, you know, and sometimes you just need to ask yourself, why? Why do you want to hang out with me? You know, what, what, what do you see in me that I might not see in myself? So we, we really have to, you know, and you don't want to look or judge everybody like, you know, be so critical in your judge, judgment or judging of everybody or anybody. But the real deal is you want to be able to discern. You want to pay attention. You want to investigate before you invest. You know, these long-term relationships, boy, you better investigate before you invest. Why? Because you, if you want something that's going to last, you know, there's little signs, there's little things that can manifest, that can, that can you know, that you can hear, you can see, that'll let you know that's a good sister, that's a good brother. We can make something happen together. And that's what this is about, being able to pay attention to really what's coming at you from others. You know, because we can talk a good talk. Sometimes all I have to do is watch the feet of other people. And where those feet are taking you will show and demonstrate really what you're about. So look at the next verse. The 13th verse says, wisdom is found on the lips of him who has understanding. You know, the Bible says in all of your getting, get understanding. We have to get an understanding on how to better live this life. And you, you're not, God did not send you here to live isolated and all by yourself. Uh-uh. No, we're to interact with other people. And look what he goes on to say. But a rod is for the back of him who is devoid of understanding. Wise people store up knowledge. Wise people store up knowledge. See, but before you can store it up, you have to gain it. You have to gain it. You have to be in the word. You have to, you know, let, I, I'm going to give you a good, a good heads up. You have to get in a word church, a Bible teaching, preaching church. You, you want to be in the church and your spirit's going to let you know this is where I belong. The Bible says the steps of a righteous person is ordered by God. And it's just something about being in this house. I know this is where I belong. Why? Because I'm connecting with the people. Not just connecting with the pastor. You know, you want to be following after Jesus, not men. There's a verse of scripture that says, do not stand in the wisdom of men, but stand in the power of God. If you want to be able to win at this game called life, you're going to need the power of God, my God, to carry you through life's problems and these different things that are designed to break a good man, a good woman down. But when you have somebody that you can talk to, because I, I, I dare say there's going to be times in your life when you're not going to be able to hear from God or feel like God is present. And you, you, you're going you're gonna to wonder, you're going to try to figure out what, what, what's going on. And I, I just need to talk to somebody because I'm going to tell you, it's a dangerous place when you start depending upon what you're thinking and, you know, what's coming up in your thoughts. You know, we can take ourselves some places that we really don't need to go. Yeah, I'm talking about the stinking thinking. I'm talking about how we can traumatize ourselves. You know, some folk are, some folk are just, 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 let's just say, steered towards the drama in the trauma. Why? Because that's what they're used to. 
But when you come to know this man named Jesus, uh, when you develop that kind of relationship with him where you just want to have more of him, oh, I'm here to tell you now, he can be the sunshine of your life if you just come to him. The Bible says we have to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not unto our own understanding. In other words, when you can get in right relationship and fellowship with him, He's going to show you how to love others. But before you learn how to love others, he'll show you how to love yourself. Lord Jesus, if we can just love ourselves the way God has purposed it. And really, that's what this is about. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. See, those that are doing evil, look what it says, or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Busybody. In other people's affairs, don't you know that your life is too important for you to be worrying about what's going on in somebody else's life? So understand, if you, know, if you value this time, if you value the gifts and if you value the blessing of just being a part of something bigger than yourself, which is called life, you don't have time to waste looking into other people's matters and affairs talking about them, going around talking about them. You know, and there are times in our life or in, in, in the life of some folk where folk will share something with you and instead of, and they want it to be shared with you and you alone. But what do, what do, what do, what do you do? You go out there and you start blabbing, telling somebody else, yeah, so and so and so, look at what they're dealing with and what they, what they fall into. We have to, see if someone's gonna entrust you or trust you like that, you should be able to just keep it before the Lord, take it to the Lord in prayer. Don't blab, don't put that out there like that. You wonder why people are coming into church and leaving? You're wondering why the mere fact you don't have a lot of friends? The Bible says if you want friends, you have to show yourself friendly. In other words, you have to be friendly. But look what he says in the 16th verse. Oh, Peter got it down. Look what Peter says. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. In other words, when Jesus comes back, guess where he's coming first? He's coming to the church. He's coming to, to those of us who make up the church. So we have to be, let's just say God's coming back for a prepared people for a prepared place. You have to be living this. You just can't talk it. You have to walk it. And that's what this is about. And look what he says. And if it first begin at us or with the church, what shall the end be for those that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly in the sinner appear? So if the righteous scarcely be saved, what are we saying? Don't get so comfortable with yourself that you think you got it like that. You see, and that's where many fall short because, you know, look at, look at Paul. When Paul uh, uh, said, Lord, can you take this thorn out of my flesh? And if you know anything about Paul, you know that he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. The brother was a well-educated man. Matter of fact, he had so much edumacation, excuse my Ebonics, but the real deal is he was so well versed in, in, in scripture, and, and, but he didn't know Jesus. He was well versed in scripture, but he didn't know Jesus. He was persecuting the church. But one day, and every one of us have to have that one day experience, that Damascus Road experience. He was on his high horse and God had to knock him off his high horse, blinded that brother. And, 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 and knocked him down off that horse and, 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 and sent him on, st on straight street so that he can recover and be the man that God wanted him to be. But look at what happened. Paul says, he says, Lord, can you take this thorn out of my flesh? See, now, the Bible never identifies what the thorn is. Some believes it might be his sight, his eyesight, because when the Lord blinded him, they're thinking maybe he never fully recovered from that. So we really don't know what the thorn in his flesh was. But whatever it is, that's to let us know that in spite of all of what you're doing, don't think you could ever, let's just say, use 
all of what you've, what you've done or what you're doing to have influence with God and to sway God into doing what you want him to do. Because Paul says, not once, not twice, but three times, can you take this thorn out of my flesh? And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. And, you know, Paul went on. He didn't say, well, because the Lord didn't do what I want him to do, I might as well turn and let this thing go. No, 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 no. If this gospel be hidden, it is hidden from those of us who are lost. See, Paul had a made up mind. Saints, you have to have a made up mind. I'm going all the way with Jesus. See, he had a fellowship and relationship with Jesus. Oh, yeah, he got to know him for himself. Well, that boy, that brother, I mean, he was in the uttermost part of the jail that Philippian jail, and that brother was praising God. God opened the doors of that place. I mean, sent the earthquake. Ooh, wow. And, and he was able to walk out, him and Silas, but he said, no, 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 because he didn't want anything to happen to the God. That, and look what, look what happened. Not only did the, did the God get saved, but his whole household was saved because Paul was able to look past in the bigger picture. He was able to see, I should say, the bigger picture. In other words, it's about souls. It's about bringing souls into the kingdom. He, it wasn't enough just to bring him. He says, we got to get the whole household. God is after households. Let me tell you something. The devil is after households too. And when you're in right standing in relationship with Jesus, I'm here to tell you he'll make a way out of no way. He'll do some things for you to let you know, my God, my God, you're in a good place. I'm here to tell you today that God so loved the world, so loved you, that he sent his one and only begotten son, that if you would just believe. We all want to pull up on God, but we find it difficult to pull up on a friend, to draw closer to a friend, to love somebody. You know, it's very important that we see that fellowship is so very important in reference to making your life work the way God has designed it and purposed it. Because God wants to send some very special people into your life that's going to be able to help you do what God has called you to do. Understand this. The call that is on your life is too big for you to carry or manifest on your own. You need others in your life to make that happen. And this is why we have to love, because if I want to make something happen and build, I have to be a, I have to feel comfortable with a person. You know, Scripture says in Amos three and three, I believe it is. How can two walk together unless they be in agreement? So there, there has to be an agreement there if we're going to build. There has to be an agreement there if we want to grow in Christ. There has to be a, an agreement there if there's going to be fellowship. That's really what this is about, saints. And God wants you to come into agreement with your brother, come into agreement with your sister, and learn how to come into agreement with people who might be difficult. Because those people that might be difficult might be, to, might be the key to your success. Oh, my God. How, God? How, God? God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things or extraordinary things. I want you to know that you're that special somebody that God want to bless. Understand the importance of the love and the fellowship. Uh, you know, okay? And look what it says in the 19th verse of, uh, for, of, uh, first of, uh, of that particular text. It says, it says, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. I'm talking about a God who is faithful. I'm talking about a God that loves you more than you could ever possibly love yourself. But when you can come into right relationship with other people, then the fellowship with him can grow even tighter. It can grow even better. And, and what I would dare say is this. When God sees that you're able to love others the way, you know, Christ loves the church, at least giving it your best effort, God will open doors for you. 
and God will do some things in your life because why? Because now you're at a place where he can trust you. Let me pray for you now. Father, we just want to thank you oh so much. Thank you for the leading of your spirit. I'm thanking you for these great men and women, Lord God, who thought it not robbery to come on the line today, Father God, to, to, to just to, 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 to sit in today, Lord God, and to receive your word. Now, you know each one individually. You're looking upon each one of us right now as I'm praying. And Father God, I pray that you would meet my brother, meet my sister where they're at right now. Oh God, if there's anyone out there today, Lord God, that's in a struggle with someone, Father God, in relationship, whatever the situation calls for, I'm asking you, Lord God, to please bless as only you can. And Lord, we love you today and we realize, Lord, that the life you've called us to is a love walk. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight and help us to walk in love one with another. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, we love you here. I tell you that every week that we love you here at God's Got a Plan. Again, I'm hoping that these programs and these, these teachings are helping you to grow and to mature. This isn't meant to take the place of your church but it's meant to let's just say to let's just say to just support that which you've already received and just to be able to just add a little a little honey a little sugar a little something extra to what you what you might be needing today why because i realize that there are some of us not able to get out of the house to go to church so i thank god for my viewers those of you who are viewing by television those who are viewing by way of youtube Continue to keep supporting us, encouraging us. Don't forget about our prayer line, scripture meditation and prayer line, every day, six days a week, Monday through Saturday at 8, in the, eight, eight o'clock in the morning. And if you miss that, there's a playback number, and you can catch that fellowship, everything that was said in the prayers of the righteous, and I'll pray for you then even, you know, on that, on that particular, at that particular time too. So come back and join us again here at God's Got a Plan. Tell somebody about us. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe and share our videos with others. We love you. Come back and see us again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yes, I believe.